I wanna try to do something cool with these. I think it's gonna work and I think it's gonna be pretty awesome, but I don't know. Let's try anyway. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This week, I'm going cyberpunk, and I am really excited about it. This is a genre and style that I have been wanting to do for a very long time, but I just don't play any games that require it. I, I didn't have a practical need to do something, but I finally do. Titan Forge, who you may remember from a previous video, has decided to sponsor another one. And this month, one of their themes, they got two themes this month, but one of them is cyberpunk. Heck yes, 100% yes, I wanna build something. I dug through some of the early files that they had available for me to get into production. Each month they release a ton of minis, but I picked three that really stood out to me, that I really liked downloaded them, printed them, painted them up. Now, if you wanna get your hands on some of their minis, you can do so by joining their Patreon. Again, every month they release a ton of miniatures, bases, terrain, awesome stuff, all different themes. Just sign up, it's like 10 bucks a month, get all the files, it's super rad. Info and links will be in the description below. And this month is Cyberpunk. To me, the whole aesthetic of this genre is densely populated cities with a whole lot going on. And I really thought that was more suited to a diorama. And I haven't built a diorama since the first one I did for my Mandalorian. And I had so much fun doing that one. I really want to do it again. It's really, really nice for me and I love having them afterwards. So I'm being a little bit selfish and I'm building a diorama. I'm going all out, going to use every tool and whatever that I have at my disposal. Let's get to building something cyberpunk. I did a few things in preparation for this build. I pre-built my MDF frame that would hold the diorama. Since the glue takes a while to dry and I want the small little connection joint to be really strong, it was better to let it sit for a day before working with it. I also pre-printed and painted the three character minis from Titan Forge that I'd be using because this, you know, took some time. In addition to those, I also printed out a handful of other 3D bits that I thought would be useful for embellishment. These came from a variety of sources and I will attribute those and provide links to them in the video description. I just want to say like, big thank you to all the digital artists that do this sort of work and make it available for the public. And I want the perspective of this diorama to be a little bit more dynamic. So I'm running the wall at an angle to create a building backdrop and street scenario, but not looking like head on from the front. And I'm using XPS insulation foam as the foundation here. And rather than trying to lay out all the compound angles and accurately cut those, I'm finding it easier, at least I think, to just tack the foam into place and cut it with a hot wire using the MDF as a guide for the cutting. This actually works pretty well. He's gonna be on this end, and I'm gonna utilize this sweet vending machine model. Have this one officer kind of peeking around the corner, covering this one who's walking towards our samurai. I wanna put some cool lit up signage, as well as maybe a little bit of a door front for a store. Now I can lay the groundwork for what is gonna be probably the coolest part of this build. I just ran out to Staples to pick up some prints that I had designed in preparation for this build. I used Photoshop to design a billboard heavily inspired by the very famous and iconic billboard in the original Blade Runner. I printed it out on cardstock. The idea was that I would glue it onto the wall and it would be a nice billboard. I also printed out some labels for my vending machine. This vending machine that I printed, it says cola on it. It looks very 20th century. I, I don't think that's appropriate. So I designed this fake soda company and printed these labels that could go on the main area and also to cover the cola emblem. But then when I was 
submitting this file for print, I saw that they had a listing for transparencies. I had also bought these lights on Amazon in prep for this, thinking that maybe I could run them somehow to create some cool illumination. They're not very bright, actually unfortunately, but I think if I put them behind this, it might glow nicely. I might need to use different lights behind these. Either way, I'm gonna put some kind of lights behind these, I'm gonna cut a hole in this where I wanna put the sign. Hopefully it looks cool. I'm gonna use some corrugated paper and cardstock now to make this little storefront shutter. I realized that the holes I had cut for the neon or whatever signs were basically the same size as the signs and I'd have no nice way to finish them or attach them. So I cut these little strips that actually overhang. So I'll be able to place the signs from the back and have a little bumper for them to attach to. It would actually be really nice if this was a clear window with a store inside. I really wanna do the signs that I made and I don't think I'm up for that challenge to squeeze a little store in here, but that would be really, really cool. For moving forward, I am going to take some joint compound and fill this gap on the side here, kind of blend this all together into the MDF. And then I'm gonna paint everything with Mod Podge and black paint to seal and harden the foam. And then I can start moving forward. I actually want to add this girder here to look like it's supporting some sort of overhead track or rail car or something like that. I don't want it in the way while painting, I don't think. I'm just going to actually stab in where I want this to go because I want it to be embedded. And this one I will paint separately. But now I can move on to spray painting. Once it was dry, I went and I touched something and I noticed that right here, it was very, very soft and hollow. I super glued this little grate in place and that super glue, I let pool up and go underneath and it actually melted the foam. Super glue will melt XPS foam sometimes. I'm usually not too concerned about gluing stuff to foam because I have Mod Podge on it. And what it did is it melted everything 
except for that top layer that had Mod Podge. So I actually cut it away, filled it in with some hot glue and stuck it back down. You know, it didn't really look too great, but that was okay because it made me add some more cracks and stuff here. I realized that I want this to look like black asphalt. And, you know, usually that has some big cracks that are filled with the patching medium or whatever. You rarely see a nice, perfect asphalt street unless it's, you know, new. And this little low spot's gonna be good because I wanna add some puddles to this later. I'm gonna keep it pretty gray tone. I want the whole thing to be kind of dark. This I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna go with kind of a glossy black and two different grays for these and then metallics for, you know, the, the metals. Let's go. All right, painting is all basically done and I'm really happy with the way it all came together. I got to experiment with a lot of different techniques and stuff. For the graffiti, I used these oil-based uh, pens and it, they work really nice, especially on the side of this vending machine. I really like the way it turned out. It allows to draw on graffiti and then you can take a brush and kind of wipe it down and create some drippy paint drip streaks and that's a, a really nice easy effect. I got to play around with stencils a lot and maybe I overdid it on the road, but but hey, it's cyberpunk, it should be very full and busy. But what I'm really happy about is the stencil on this corrugated paper here. It allowed me to make up for a mistake from a project quite some time ago. When I did my shipping containers, I made paper stencils and it didn't really work on the corrugated paper and I wasn't too happy with it. A lot of people 
have made the really great suggestion of making a stencil out of the actual corrugated paper, flipping it upside down and allowing it to lock into place. So I've been looking for an opportunity to try that. This was perfect and it worked really, really well. So now I'm just gonna pop these in place and find a way to hopefully glue them. Super glue is very shiny, so I wanna get rid of that. With that behind, it really doesn't light these up at all. And yes, these came with multiple attachments and you can do like five at a time, but the more you add, the dimmer they get. So five of them isn't really much brighter than one. Pretty disappointed. It's not going to work, which is a bit unfortunate since I started my video saying I have something cool to do with these. I mean, you could use them for like a neon sign and make some lettering. I need a much brighter light source behind these. I'm gonna jump onto Amazon, I'm gonna order something and hopefully get it very quickly tomorrow so that I can finish this build in time. There's not much to do in the meantime because I don't wanna place my figures until that's done. I think it needs one of those pillars that stop those barricade cones, pedestrian, no, not pedestrian. One of those cones you see to stop cars from driving into things. I'd like to make one and put it right here. And I'm gonna use a dowel because I think it's gonna be the right size. Now, I want that rounded dome on top and I could just sand it, but I remembered I still have a ton of these little dome things from my Dwarven pillar build and they are proving to be quite useful. So I'm just gonna glue it to the end. It's almost perfectly the same size as this dowel. I love it. It's really, really great. I decided to design and get printed some more elements to make a sign that I can have projecting out here, implying it's the sign for what could be a store right here. I'm gonna build a frame the exact same way that I did on my recent Windows video if you wanna check out that process in detail. On this vending machine, I thought it might look nice to actually add a real looking keypad here. Gonna try that out, add these details, and uh, hopefully my replacement lights show up soon. All right, I finally got my lights. This is quite an ordeal. I ordered replacement lights. It was really hard to find the kind that I wanted that was a bunch of really bright color adjustable LEDs, but that was controlled via battery. I found something on Amazon, ordered it on Prime, which should have been delivered yesterday and it never showed up. I've ordered like a hundred things on Amazon Prime and never had them ever show up a day late. But this time when I was stuck waiting and it was really important, it was late. Anyway, they're here. I got the lights, got some batteries and now I can install them and move forward. While I waited, I did do two small things. I actually decided to add some parchment paper to the inside here and it just diffuses the light and it will stop any directional little beams from LEDs and just give it a better glow that I think will work much better overall. I also pre-made my little foam insert here that will close this up once I put in the lights. After I install the lights, I'm gonna install the battery compartment and control on the back on the outside so that I can really glue this in place, mud it with some joint compound, sand it and paint it so this is a nice monolithic clean black structure. I don't want to see all these seams. But first, I actually have to put the lights in.
All right, all right, all right. The moment that I have been anxiously waiting for all week is finally here. I can finally put these last little bits in place. All the delays and holdups and complications with this build are finally behind me and I can just do the last little cool bit. I'm very excited about it. Before I place these minis, I wanna say thank you again to Titan Forge for sponsoring and inspiring this build. Not only would this video not exist if it wasn't for them sponsoring it, but this build, this thing that I wanted to do for quite some time wouldn't have happened if it weren't for these super cool, inspiring minis. I just picked three minis from the lot of cool minis that are available this month and every month. If you go check out their Patreon, link in the video description, you'll see join up 10 bucks a month and it will give you access to a butt ton of cool files that are themed differently every month. This month is a split theme between cyberpunk as well as dragon empire. So if you want more traditional Asian warriors, you get that. If you want crazy cyberpunk, you get that. If you want a combination of the two, you get that. Plus you get like a million, well not a million, but lots of bases and some bigger models and modular terrain. So again, thank you Titan Forge. You guys are awesome. I love working with you guys. I'm going to start here with the vending machine and for this I'm actually going to use hot glue just because it's a big piece and I want it to stay in place right away and not move around on me. I think he'll be able to stand and stay in place while that dries. I think this thing needs some puddles. It's not cyberpunk without some water on the street because apparently it always rains in cyberpunk settings. I want something that will cure instantly and can also double as a way to hold some bits like this. So I'm gonna use UV resin, just clear UV resin and a flashlight that'll instantly kick it off and bond it and act as my adhesive. I don't wanna put super glue in these holes because I don't wanna have a repeat of what happened here where it runs underneath and melts. I don't wanna use PVA because then I'll be stuck holding this for a super long time. So I think I am going to just use some UV resin and create a bit of a puddle around this. I need to kind of tease it out with a toothpick to give it a more natural appearance. And I want it to not look too thick because if it looks too thick, it looks like a bump. And that is, as they say, a wrap. This was an exceptionally challenging project, but for every bit of challenge and holdup, it equaled out in reward. I really enjoyed making this project. It was really fun to do something in such a different theme. It's a, it's a genre and a theme and an aesthetic that I really love, but doesn't come into play in my work very often. So I'm glad that it finally did. I learned a lot of things along the way. I played with a lot of different techniques and ideas for the first time and I just, I had a blast doing it. I hope that you enjoyed this build and this video and that you learned something in the process. Of course, if you have no practical reason to build a cyberpunk diorama, although I don't think you need a practical reason other than it being fun, uh, you can take a bunch of these ideas and turn them into modular terrain or gaming pieces for a variety of sci-fi or cyberpunk gaming. If you wanna pick up any tools or supplies for your own hobby needs, just getting started or looking for something to build your arsenal with, 
check out blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list all of the stuff that I use regularly, explain why I use it and link to the product so that you can be sure you're getting the right thing. For a couple of specific things on this build, like the various lights I tried out, I will put links to those in the video description below as they are not on that page. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you enjoy the videos that I put out each and every week, if you get a lot of value out of them, if they really do you some good, whether it be teaching you something or just entertaining you, bringing your family together through a new hobby, whatever it may be, if you get value out of what I do and you want to help me keep providing that value for the community, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel via Patreon. Joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship gives you some perks like joining the private Facebook group and Discord server and getting early access to videos and all that sort of stuff. But the real benefit to it is helping me help the community. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this week, guys. And uh, sorry to say, I, I probably won't be able to top this next week, but that's okay. I get to do these really neat ones every once in a while. Man, it's got lights. That's pretty cool.